in the Indian tech ecosystem, the most talked about recent trend is reverse clip. Let us understand what this trend is, what is causing it, and what are the nuances around it. In the past decade and a half, most Indian tech businesses were structured in a manner that while the business operations and the operating entities were in India, the eventual holding company, where the fundraising happened, where the cap table is, and which held all the operating assets, whether in India or abroad, was set up abroad. This was done for a few reasons in particular. First is IPO. Every company, every founder, and every investor ideally want the company to be listed on a stock exchange, and that is considered to be the best form of exit. This is no different for tech companies. Uh, historically, however, the relationship between Indian tech companies and IPO in India was not as rosy as it is right now. India does not really permit listing of Indian companies directly on foreign exchanges, which were historically historically considered to be conducive for tech listings. People were also skeptic about depth of Indian markets uh, for tech listing because most tech companies, when they are successful, they become unicorns and beyond, and uh, they really require deep public markets for listings. And uh, while not all companies would end up reaching IPO stage, just to make sure that this option really existed for them, if they were to grow to that extent that they could go IPO, uh, the holding companies of, of these tech companies in the last decade and more were set up abroad so that they have that option. Second reason why they set up abroad was it was considered to be that that fundraising itself is easier in certain foreign jurisdictions as compared to India because India does have capital account convertibility restrictions and uh, in the absence of these capital account convertibility restrictions in other jurisdictions such as Singapore, US, most investors were thought to be preferring those jurisdictions for investments uh, in into tech companies in particular. Third, even transfer of shares and eventual m a based on transfer of shares was considered to be easier in such foreign jurisdictions, again for capital account convertibility reasons and also because most acquirers who are set up abroad, they prefer acquiring companies and they are very comfortable acquiring companies in jurisdictions which are uh, global hubs. Fourth, in some cases, the first check writers and early stage investors of these companies were based out of com- uh, countries such as the US and they preferred to invest in only companies which were in their jurisdictions and therefore young uh, startup founders in India set up companies in those jurisdictions to receive that first check, that first set of guidance and that brand name of that first check writer and the first institutional investor to take their company forward and they set it up there for that reason and continued to be there. Given the above, India became home to many successful tech companies which actually did not have any uh, holding company in India. With time and particularly over the last uh, few years uh, as such, many of the above aspects which compelled these tech companies and their investors to set up uh, their holding structures abroad have reversed. So these these facts have reversed. Uh, For instance, India has a very large and robust public market uh, that is welcoming tech listings now. Foreign acquirers and investors are more comfortable in investing in India directly as compared to what, what, what was the situation there a decade ago. Also, many of these companies with foreign uh, hold codes are either in regulated sectors or they are consumer facing. And for, from both consumer as well as regulatory side, it is preferable to be in India and list in India since the brand is recognized in India and even the regulators prefer having Indian companies. Uh, operating in regulated sectors and where they have visibility until the last holding company within uh, India. Therefore, many of these companies are now heading back to the country and pursuing their future growth in India, including listing. The uh, the law in India actually allows for a, a merger of a foreign company with an Indian company and therefore this route is uh, being used the most. In other cases, people are also proceeding with share-based restructuring resulting in the Indian company being the ultimate holding company pursuant to share transfers and other uh, intermediate uh, steps. There are of course nuances in both approaches and the third, fourth and fifth approaches also which are uh, a a mix of various uh, things. But ultimately one has to look at legal, financial and tax aspects at length in each structure and uh, what we will uh, see going forward and what I envisage going forward in particular is that most companies barring the few which really need to be abroad for operational reasons where the market is there or for business reasons they really need to be abroad most Indian tech companies going forward will be started and uh, continue to be uh, in India and finally list in India as well.